In this video, we are going to learn more about how sugar is made, or sugar processing technology. A sugar refinery is a refinery which processes raw sugar from cane, or beets into white refined sugar. Many cane sugar mills produce raw sugar, which is sugar that still contains molasses, giving it more color and impurities than the white sugar which is normally consumed in households and used as an ingredient in soft drinks and foods. While cane sugar does not need refining to be palatable, sugar from sugar beet is almost always refined to remove the strong, usually unwanted, taste of beets from it. The refined sugar produced is more than 99% pure sucrose. Many sugar mills only operate during the harvest season, whereas refineries may work the year-round. Sugar beet refineries tend to have shorter periods when they process beet than cane refineries, but may store intermediate product and process it in the off-season. Raw sugar is either processed and sold locally, or is exported and refined elsewhere. The sugar cane is a thick, tall, perennial grass that flourishes in tropical or subtropical regions. Sugar synthesized in the leaves is used as a source of energy for growth, or is sent to the stalks for storage. It is the sweet sap in the stalks that is the source of sugar as we know it. The reed accumulates sugar to about 15% of its weight. Sugarcane yields about 2,600,000 tons of sugar per year. In the United States, harvesting of both cane and sugar beet is done primarily by machine, although in some states it is also done by hand. The harvested cane stalks are loaded mechanically into trucks or railroad cars and taken to mills for processing into raw sugar. After the cane arrives at the mill yards, it is mechanically unloaded and excessive soil and rocks are removed. The cane is cleaned by flooding the carrier with warm water in the case of sparse rock and trash clutter or by spreading the cane on agitating conveyors that pass through strong jets of water and combing drums to remove larger amounts of rocks, trash and leaves, etc. At this point, the cane is clean and ready to be milled. Sugar refineries are often located in heavy sugar consuming regions such as North America, Europe and Japan. Since the 1990s, many state-of-the-art sugar refineries have been built in the Middle East and North Africa region, e.g. in Dubai, Saudi Arabia, and Algeria. The world's largest sugar refinery company is American Sugar Refining with facilities in North America and Europe. Two or three heavily grooved crusher rollers break the cane and extract a large part of the juice, or swing hammer type shredders, 1200 rpm, shred the cane without extracting the juice. Revolving knives cutting the stalks into chips are supplementary to the crushers. In most countries, the shredder precedes the crusher, a combination of two, or even all three, methods may be used. The pressing process involves crushing the stalks between the heavy and grooved metal rollers to separate the fiber, the gas, from the juice that contains the sugar. As the cane is crushed hot water, or a combination of hot water and recovered impure juice, is sprayed onto the crushed cane counter currently as it leaves each mill for diluting. The extracted juice, called vesu, contains 95% or more of the sucrus present. The mass is then diffused, a process that involves finely cutting or shredding the stalks. Next, the sugar is separated from the cut stalks by dissolving it in hot water or hot juice. The juice from the mills, a dark green color, is acid and turbid. The clarification or defecation process is designed to remove both soluble and insoluble impurities, such as sand, soil, and ground rock that have not been removed by preliminary screening. The process employs lime and heat as the clarifying agents. Milk of lime, about one pound per ton of cane, neutralizes the natural acidity of the juice, forming insoluble lime salts. Heating the lime juice to boiling coagulates the albumin, and some of the fats, waxes, and gums, and the precipitate formed in traps suspended solids as well as the minute particles. The sugar beet solution, on the other hand, is purified by precipitating calcium carbonate, calcium sulfite, or both in it repeatedly. Impurities become entangled in the green crystals of precipitate, and are removed by continuous filtration. The muds separate from the clear juice through sedimentation. The non-sugar impurities are removed by continuous filtration. The final clarified juice contains about 85% water and has the same composition as the raw extracted juice except for the removed impurities. To concentrate this clarified juice, about two-thirds of the water is removed through vacuum evaporation. Generally, four vacuum boiling cells or bodies are arranged in series so that each succeeding body has a high vacuum and therefore boils at a lower temperature. The vapors from one body can thus boil the juice in the next one the steam introduced into the first cell does what is called multiple effect evaporation. The vapor from the last cell goes to a condenser. The syrup leaves the last body continuously with about 65% solids and 35% water. The sugar beet sucrose solution at this point is also nearly colorless and it likewise undergoes multiple effect vacuum evaporation. The syrup is seeded, cooled and put in a centrifuge machine. The finished beet crystals are washed with water and dried. Crystallization is the next step in the manufacture of sugar. 
Crystallization takes place in a single stage vacuum pan. The syrup is evaporated until saturated with sugar. As soon as the saturation point has been exceeded, small grains of sugar are added to the pan, or strike. These small grains, called seed, serve as nuclei for the formation of sugar crystals. Seed grain is formed by adding 56 ounces of white sugar into the bowl of a slurry machine, and mixing with 3.3 parts of a liquid mixture. 70% methylated spirit, and 30% glycerin. The machine runs at 200 RPM for 15 hours. Additional syrup is added to the strike, and evaporated, so that the original crystals that were formed are allowed to grow in size. The growth of the crystals continues until the pan is full. When sucrose concentration reaches the desired level, the dense mixture of syrup and sugar crystals, called mesequite, is discharged into large containers known as crystallizers. Crystallization continues in the crystallizers as the mesequite is slowly stirred and cooled. Mesequite from the mixes is allowed to flow into centrifugals, where the thick syrup, or molasses, is separated from the raw sugar by centrifugal force. The high-speed centrifugal action used to separate the mesequite into raw sugar crystals and molasses is done in revolving machines called centrifugals. A centrifugal machine has a cylindrical basket suspended on a spindle, with perforated sides lined with wire cloth, inside which are metal sheets containing 400 to 600 perforations per square inch. The basket revolves at speeds from 1000 to 1800 rpm. The raw sugar is retained in the centrifuge basket because the perforated lining retains the sugar crystals. The mother liquor, or molasses, passes through the lining, due to the centrifugal force exerted. The final molasses, black strap molasses, containing sucrose, reducing sugars, organic non-sugars, ash, and water, is sent to large storage tanks. Once the sugar is centrifuged, it is cut down, and sent to a granulator for drying. In some countries, sugarcane is processed in small factories without the use of centrifuges, and a dark brown product, non-centrifugal sugar, is produced. Centrifugal sugar is produced in more than 60 countries, while non-centrifugal sugar in about 20 countries. Damp sugar crystals are dried by being tumbled through heated air in a granulator. The dry sugar crystals are then sorted by size through vibrating screens, and placed into storage bins. Sugar is then sent to be packed in the familiar packaging we see in grocery stores, in bulk packaging, or in liquid form for industrial use. The bagasse produced after extracting the juice from sugarcane, is used as fuel to generate steam in factories. Increasingly large amounts of bagasse are being made into paper, insulating board, and hardboard, as well as furfuel, a chemical intermediate for the synthesis of furin and tetrahydrofurin. The end product derived from sugar refining is blackstrap molasses. It is used in cattle feed as well as in the production of industrial alcohol, yeast, organic chemicals, and rum. Mill sanitation is an important factor in quality control measures. Bacteriologists have shown that a small amount of sour bagasse can infect the whole stream of warm juice flowing over it. Modern mills have self-cleaning troughs with a slope designed in such a way that bagasse does not hold up, but flows out with the juice stream. Strict measures are taken for insect and pest controls. Because cane spoils relatively quickly, great steps have been taken to automate the methods of transportation and get the cane to the mills as quickly as possible. Maintaining the high quality of the end product means storing brown and yellow refined sugars in a cool and relatively moist atmosphere so that they continue to retain their moisture and do not become hard.